This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys had a great holiday. Let's get right into it. Now, Drake. Drake's a great artist, man. Uh, I'm enjoying this interview he did with Rap Radar. They let him speak a lot, and I like that, okay? Um, they don't really have to guide someone like Drake. You know, he's been doing interviews for 10 years, you know, so he's able to say everything he needs to get off his chest. Now, there's a good part of the interview. I, I haven't listened to the whole interview yet, but I've listened to a good half of it. Um, where he talks about, he actually breaks down taking a loss to push a T, but he breaks down the loss differently. He says, you know, push a T had great information. It was shocking information and there was no way I could top that. Um, I was going to go to a disrespectful place. I was mad and that's not something I wanted to hear two years from now. I felt like it was going to go to a place where I was going to say things that I was going to like not want to hear from myself pretty much regret later now push a t took it to a super disrespectful level because it was a super upside for him he was battling with the biggest rapper in the world okay i still think drake should have dropped a third uh, second record but that's just me being a fan of the back and forth because i don't think that would have ever ever left rap unless they saw each other and it just in place and these two really won't be in the same places at the same time he also uh kind of alludes that you know, that be, that problem stems from Kanye West because they both uh, like minds. They, he said he uh, Kanye recruited someone that really had distaste for me. And he has deep-rooted issues. Kanye West, deep-rooted issues against me that I can't fix for him. And it seems sick, you know? So it's like, I can't, I don't want to ever speak to Kanye again, he said. You know, I, I feel like he's in a certain place and he'll never get past it. And with the Push T situation, he said when he revealed, you know, my son... Uh, I hadn't had 100% confirmation that was my son yet, so I couldn't reveal it. Yes, we. I was not going to do... He said I wasn't going to reveal my son with Adidas. Like, here's my son, Adidas. He says we were working on a name for a sneaker, maybe, playing off my son's name. But I wasn't, I wasn't going to reveal my son through Adidas. I mean, that would have been kind of crazy, too. You know, it doesn't seem out of Drake's character. It seems more like someone that's more thirsty for money that would do that. But, um, you know, Pusha T... You know, and then he said, uh, I, what really made me mad is he, he wished death upon my friend, 40, because of his illness. Um, he lied about my mom and my dad's relationship. But he said, you know, some people have morals and principles in beefs and some don't. Plus, he did what he's supposed to do, and he could take the, the win if he wants. But I wasn't going to go to the place I needed to go. And plus, I was never going to top that information he had. And I think he's right. He was never going to top that information he had. But I'm still so curious. What was so disrespectful? I think he was going to go at Kanye and bring up some things with Kim Kardashian and everything. That's where I think he was going to go. And then that would have got the focus off. Because it wouldn't. he wouldn't have been beefing with Pusha T anymore. He would have been beefing with Kanye directly instead of indirectly through interviews and talking and slick lines here and there. They haven't beefed head to head yet. It's more like subliminal beef. You know, Kanye might react to something and have a crazed moment where he's talking about Drake, but uh, Drake will subtly say things. Drake's winning that. He's, he's, he's messing with Kanye's head so bad that he drove him to try to be a pastor. Kanye was driven to become a pastor Drake messed with his head so hard. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, then he also detailed the Meek Mill beef. And then this is where I don't get. I don't get how these guys, like Meek Mill tried to end Drake's career by discrediting him. Um, I think he has a real affection for Meek Mill. Not, not you know, pause. Not like that. Just like he really looks up to Meek Mill for some reason. Uh, he said Meek's really about that life and that could have gone somewhere. It could have gone somewhere because these are two guys that have a lot of money and have people willing to do things for them. But Meek, Meek's tough just being from Philly. Seriously, like anybody that comes up in North Philly, or West Philly, you know, that's not an easy place to grow up. Okay, like I've been there many, many times with Beanie Siegel back in, you know, 2007 and then with Meek around 2009 and then, you know, Dark Low after that, you know, and like Meek, Philly's a special place, but it 
it's a place where you got to be tough. So Meek is tough to a degree by default, but he wasn't like moving packs on the block and everything. He was, you know, he was a kid from Philly that was, that would, you know, went through it. So, um, but he gives a lot of credit to Meek, almost like he's like AR having them. But Meek isn't soft. I know, you know, we know that, but uh, you know what I mean? But I think a lot of that had to do with Nikki. Meek blames it on perks. You know, it's like, uh, I think it had a lot of it had to do with Nikki, and Meek was still in his feelings a lot. Meek's always been in his feelings a lot on Twitter. I think most recently he's not anymore, okay? Like, he's matured a lot recently, but he used to be in his feelings a lot about Wale and this and tweeting this and tweeting that, and, you know, it's kind of crazy. But um, I enjoyed the breakdown of the Pusha T situation. He did give him his W, but, you know, like, because of the information and the shock value. The shock value was good. Drake got him on the, what was it, Duppy freestyle? That was good. But the story added on was just too disrespectful. I mean, it was very disrespectful. Drake would have had to get super disrespectful. And it just would have gone to an ugly place, like you said. I, I agree with him. But uh, I still want to hear it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I think that Kanye West... I, wasn't he supposed to drop an album today? Was, I don't know. But uh, Kanye West and him are always going to have an issue with each other. Um, Kanye West, I think, is a little crazed in the head. Like a genius type of craze, you know? Um, Pusha T is always going to keep going at Drake. I don't think Drake's going to give that any attention anymore because he said nobody cares about Pusha T. Like, this made his career. I don't know about that, but... And then he said, I don't believe Pusha T. He's, he's too fake. I don't believe anything he raps about. Pusha T, I think, is just as... He might not be as... I don't know. He's not fake. That's for sure. I, I don't know. I don't know what... Drake just really doesn't like Pusha T, you can tell. Especially because he talked about his friend, you know, 40. I don't blame him. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys. What do you guys think about this? This is Jordan Tower with JT News, and I'll check you guys in the next one. I hope you guys have a great day. You're waking up. Make sure you look in the mirror. Believe in yourself. Believe you can do it. Believe there are no limits. It might take time to get to your goals, but you got to be patient with life and allow life to give you what you want, you know, but you got to meet life halfway. You got to get out there and you got to work every day and you got to be persistent and you got to try because if you don't try, life will recognize you're not trying because that's showing the, the universe that you don't believe in yourself. You got to show the universe you believe, believe in yourself. Look in the mirror in the morning and say, I believe I'm going to try my hardest today and I'm going to keep doing this as long as I have to, to get to my goals, whatever they may be. And you define your success. Do not allow anybody to define success for you. If you want to work hard and get a Honda Civic and that's success to you, success to you, that's fine. That's a great car, okay? You don't have to have a Mercedes or a BMW. Success is what you make it. I love you guys and I appreciate you guys. And I'll check you guys in the next one.